Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat in which we would look at this CPA question that looks pretty intimidating. And this question was sent to me by one of my followers on YouTube. They would like me to go over this question. So I'm going to go over this questions and specifically, I'm going to show you immediately how you could eliminate two choices and go down to 50 50. So basically, Practically on most CPA questions, you should be able to eliminate two choices if you un if you have a basic understanding. And when they ask about journal entries, so when the exam asks about journal entries, here's what I need to tell you. Most CPA prep companies, they don't teach you the basic of debits and credits. And the reason is simple. They, f they feel that's not their job. And that's true. Why? Because by the time you sign up for a CPA prep course, you already went through your accounting education. Therefore, they're not going to be they're not going to be wasting in quote any time on basic debits and credits. And that's the difference between what a CPA prep course do and Farhat accounting lectures. On Farhat accounting lectures, I teach you the basics. And believe me, once you know the basics, once you understand the concept, you could eliminate two answer choices immediately on most CPA questions. I'm not going to say all, but on most CPA questions, in 10 to 15 seconds, you should be able to eliminate two choices and you're down to 50-50. Then take your chances. How about that? Okay, so let's take a look at this question and I'm going to show you how you can take out two choices immediately. The following accounts were among those reported on Adam's core balance sheet. They have investments in trading securities. The cost is 80,000. The value is 140. Preferred stock, they have a par value of $20, 2,000 shares issued an outstanding, 400,000. Additional paid in capital on the preferred stock is 30,000, and they have a retained earnings of $90,000. There's a lot of questions they can ask you here. Let's see what they are, let's see what they are asking. On January 20th, year two, Adam exchange all the marketable securities. So these, they will need to be gone, all the marketable securities, for 5,000 shares of Adam preferred stock. So they exchanged them for the preferred shares. Market value at the date of the exchange was 150. So this was on the date of the exchange was 150. For the marketable securities and $30 per share for the preferred stock. That's fine. The 5,000 shares of preferred stock were retired immediately after the exchange. So we exchanged them. We exchange the preferred for the uh, uh, we exchange the preferred for the investments, and we immediately retire the preferred. Which of the following journal entries should Adam record in connection with with this transaction? Now, how can I eliminate two answer choices immediately? If you know how to issue basic journal entries for the preferred stock, you'll be able to eliminate two entries. So I'm going to give you an example to show you how we issued. Um, stock preferred stock. So let's assume we did issue preferred stock. Let's assume we issued uh, 1000 shares of $20 preferred stock for $40,000. So if I ask you to journalize this entry, do you know how to journalize this entry? Well, we debit cash. We received $40,000. Then we have to credit preferred stock. How much do we credit preferred stock? The key is to know. This is the key in this question. Do you know how do you credit preferred stock? Well, it's the number of shares and you have to memorize this number of shares, number of shares times the par value. And this, this formula applies also to common stock. So when you issue common stock, the common stock is credited for the number of shares times the par value. And when you remove preferred stock and when you removed uh, common stock, you will do the same thing, but you debit the preferred stock and you debit the common stock. So here I issued 1000 shares times $20. That's going to give me $20,000. Yes, four zeros, $20,000. And this is the preferred stock. So I did the preferred stock. So what's left, what's left is the additional paid in capital preferred stock. So anything left, it's additional paid in capital preferred stock. And this is how you issue preferred stock. That's fine. So at this point, when you get to these questions, you need to understand how to issue preferred stock. If you know how to issue preferred stock, then you know how to retire preferred stock. Because how do you retire preferred stock? You debit preferred stock and you debit additional paid in capital preferred stock. How much do you debit preferred stock? The number of shares that you are retiring times the par value. So how many shares am I retiring? I'm, I am 
I am exchanging it for 5,000 shares of preferred that I'm retiring those shares. So 5,000 times 20, I need to debit preferred stock 100,000. Immediately, once I know I need to debit preferred stock 100,000, here's my 50-50. C and D are gone because they have preferred stock at 150, preferred stock at 150. Now I'm down to 50-50, okay? Now, even, even a step further, every time you retired preferred stock, you have to retire the related additional paid in capital because look, these two accounts comes hand in hand. So those two accounts, preferred stock and additional paid in capital, they come hand in hand, just like fixed asset and accumulated depreciation. When you retire a fixed asset, you have to get rid of its accumulated depreciation. When you retired common stock, you have to look if there's any additional paid in capital related to it. When you retire preferred stock, you also have to get rid of any uh, paid in capital. So what, how much additional paid in capital? Well, simply put, I retired, I, I had 20,000 shares. I had, so I retired 5,000 out of the 20,000 shares, which is I retired one fourth or 25% of my preferred stock. If I retired 25% of my preferred stock, I have to retire 25% of this account. So simply put, 25% of additional paid in capital cannot be B because B, it says additional paid in capital 30,500. We don't even have 30,500 for all of additional paid in capital. I eliminate B. I'm down to A. A is the answer, but I'm going to take you through the whole thing. So you could answer this, these questions and really a short amount of time if you have basic understanding and all what I did I did not even go went into you know how, how, how am I gonna exchange it to invest uh, how, how am I gonna get rid of the investment and all the other stuff so once you know that you need to debit preferred stock 100,000 and how did you come up with 100,000 5,000 shares times 20 then I have to retire 25% of 30,000 so I'm gonna take 30,000 times 0.25 and that's going to give me 7,500. Therefore, I debit additional paid in capital 7,500. At this point, if you don't have time, move on. At this point, if you don't have time, choose A and move on. Okay. Now, but we have time because I'm going to explain the remainder for you. Well, you have to credit investment and trading securities because you are exchanging those. You are getting rid of them. Investment in trading securities, 140,000. And this is this entry here. So we did this entry, this entry. Now, those investments, when, when, you, to, when you retired them, they had a gain. They had a gain of 10,000. Therefore, you can recognize the gain. You can recognize the gain of 10,000. Now, notice what happened. We retired worth of securities, 150,000. And, and, and against those, we, uh, we got rid of 107,500. So we have a loss. Now, we don't debit the loss. What we do is we debit retained earnings for the difference. And retained earnings is 42,500. Again, you don't have to go this far. <laughs> okay, let, let, me, let me recap one more time. Once I know I'm retiring 5,000 shares of, of preferred stock, 5,000 shares times 20, because when I retire them, I have to, to debit preferred stock exactly the same way I credited preferred stock, which is the number of shares times the par value. I eliminated C, I eliminated B. I'm down to, I need to have a preferred stock 100,000, preferred stock 100,000. Then I need to retire the related additional paid in capital. And here they make it very easy for us. Simply put, if you understand that you don't have, how can you debit additional paid in capital, 30,500? If you don't have 30,500, you only have 30,000. So I could take out B, A is the answer, and that's the whole story for you. So understanding the basics. So what do I mean by the basics? You have to be 100% comfortable with your financial accounting 101. It means that's like your your first course you took in, in college, you'd learn about preferred stock. All what they did in this question is try to make it look intimidating. But if you understand it, they cannot, look, he, he, here's my philosophy. If you understand the topics, I mean, l l l let me rephrase. I want you to sit in the person, in the seat of the person that's writing the question. The person that writes this question, the person, the people that write the questions for the CPA exam, 
it's very difficult. I'm telling you from experience. I don't write any questions for the CPA exam, but I do write, I did write questions for the CFA exam at some point. The most difficult thing for the exam writer is to select the wrong answers. In other words, the exam writer, here's what they struggled with. They struggled with B, C, and D. It's easy to give the answer A, but the exam writer will find hard problems writing the wrong answers, which is B, C, and D. What does that mean to you? It means if you have a basic understanding of the concept, you could eliminate the wrong answers immediately. This is what I meant by learning the basics. Now, how can you learn the basics? The CPA review course don't teach you the basic. I know I keep repeating myself. What should you do? Go to forhatlectures.com, whatever you are studying for reg, for BEC or audit. I have plenty of resources to help you succeed. Add 10 to 15 points to your CPA exam. I hope this illustration was beneficial to you. Don't shortchange yourself on your CPA exam. Your CPA exam is a 20 to 30 year investment. And, and who knows, if medication keeps getting better, you may live an, until we are 90. So it's maybe 40 to 50 year investment in your career. Don't shortchange yourself. Subscribe to my website. It's it's a nominal fee. It's really meaningless. It's less than a dollar per day. It's You can even buy a cup of coffee and learn the basics so you can succeed on the CPA exam and in any way they throw any questions at you. Good luck. Study hard. And if you have any questions about the CPA exam, you could always reach out to me. Go to my website, make a Calendly appointment, and we can talk. Best of luck.